That's our initial impression from the panel. Let's get reaction now from Westminster with our political editor, Darren McCaffrey. Darren, Conservative MPs are going to have to yeah, go I'm... on television and <laughs> speak to their local papers. I know how it works. Uh, you'll be given quotes. They're going to have to defend this. Mm. Is there enough of them, enough good news to make them want to uh, provide a positive spin on what Rishi Sunak delivered today? Well, here it is, uh, Gloria. Uh, well, this is the Office of Budget Responsibilities part of it. The other bit on the ground. Uh, are Conservative MPs uh, going to go out and defend this? You bet they are. Are they happy with some of the measures? You bet they are, not least of all on uh, fuel GC uh, and that national insurance change to the threshold. Does it go far enough? I mean, the OBR, this is the most significant thing I think we need to take away with it today. The OBR is suggesting that we're looking at the biggest fall in living standards this country has seen since records began back in the 1950s. Is what the Chancellor announced today going to be enough to offset any of that? It's Dr Steve Brain. He is the uh, Conservative MP for Winchester and joins me now. Steve, Hello. thank you very much indeed for joining us. Just on that point, um, let's look at the kind of good news, I suppose, in some mm -hmm. regards. 5p off tax on fuel, though fuel prices could go up substantially between now and next uh, March. And at the end of the day, that national insurance hike, even though it's been offset for lots of people, is still going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are increasing taxes at a time in which inflation is expected to average 7.4% this year. Look, I've literally just come out of the chamber. My constituents in Winchester are smart. They know the economic reality we face. The Chancellor didn't come and try and, uh, you know, put the lipstick on the pig today. He was very honest. He was very sober. He told exactly what the OBR had said about very difficult times ahead for our living standards. On top of the measures that he announced last month around council tax bill reduction, which you'll have seen in your bills in the last few days, he then announced today some more measures. So around fuel duty, which you've mentioned, around more targeted help for the poorest households, the money that's going to councils, so he's doubled that amount of money. And of course then longer term, around zero VAT for instance, on fuel heat pumps and solar panels and that stuff that helps with fuel efficiency. In answer to the question you were setting up there with Gloria, what was it enough? Well, I think it could never be enough because the cost of living crisis is so pinching that whatever he did today, I get the media and the opposition were going to say it's not enough. But Rishi is the sober, sensible face on the front bench who is telling it like it is. He's the guy with the figures, he's counting the beans, you can't spend what you don't have and that's as fundamental a conservative principle it, as you it, will find. That, it, it, that's true, uh, but these are political choices. For example, you could decide not to go ahead with that tax rate. Yes, we could. Um, and, and that would have consequences for the National Health Service. And I'll Service. tell you why we don't. Why not? Because the National Health Service is the country and the public's number one, by a long distance, priority. And I hear people sniping about the rise in national assurance. I don't hear any of them say the NHS should be given less money. So if you have another plan as to how you're going to find those billions for the NHS to deal with the waiting list, to keep the standards high, to keep the, the NHS the best in the world, then come forward with it. Otherwise, get behind the plan. Just in regards, though, to uh, energy bills, uh, you, we know, for example, when it comes to taxation, I think he's only going to cancel maybe about 20, 25 percent of what he announced last year. So most people are still going to see substantial tax increases. But on fuel, why not have a windfall tax on these energy companies that are making billions and millions and billions and billions of pounds worth of profit rather than raising taxes on ordinary working people? Well, he took that head on today at the very start of his response to the Shadow Chancellor. And he said it many times is that we want to see investment in the energy sector. We want to see investment in clean, green energy, which is ultimately going to drive down prices and reduce the reliance on Russian gas, for instance. So we don't think that's the way to go. Now, you're right. They are choices that we are making. But if, we, if you make a choice as a government, then the opposition parties have to make their choice too. And I don't hear any credible plan. Here is a tax plan. I don't hear any credible plan coming from the opposition. Rishi was very smart today, I thought, in what he said to Rachel Reeve when he said the opposition supported every single penny of the £407 billion we had to spend in the last two years helping the country through COVID. Now they don't seem to want to pay for it. Well, That's the reality just, of just political life.